Hello everyone and welcome back to the uh, Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Shop. Um, it's a fairly cold uh, winter day or winter evening here at uh, our workshop, but I have something I'd really like to, to show to you guys. We have been working on a concept and it basically involves uh, propellant tanks for the, uh, for the rockets. Uh, one of the major components and one of the most important components, the propellant tanks it can become a bit of a headache. Um, they're crucial components and they can be frankly expensive to, to get a hold of. So we decided to, uh, to start a little experimentation of our own to see if we could actually build ourselves some, um, some reliable, high quality and cheap propellant tanks. So what we started out with is that we had some good experiments with some semi-automatic uh, welding we did on the BPM-5 engines. So we upscaled that a bit and then we built uh, ourselves a piece of machinery. And that one is collectively known as the, um, as the large diameter pipe cutter. Or it has then since then been extended to welder as well. It's a modular unit. I'm standing right here next to it. And it's uh, made out of uh, three segments of uh, two meters that can be put uh, one after the other. Now, Martin did a wonderful puzzle here so that a system that can handle pipes up to one meter diameter meter pipes of six meters in length can be extended all the way down that uh, that direction and what this machine can basically do for us is that it can rotate uh, a pipe anywhere from 20 centimeters up to a meter in diameter and simply uh, simply roll it slowly like a barbecue chicken. And we use that for a couple of purposes. First of all, we can cut pipes very accurately and very repeatedly uh, with very, very flat end faces, which is pretty much uh, required to make some good uh, propellant tanks. Secondly, we can, after they have been cut, we can put, uh, for example, uh, end bottoms on these pieces of pipe. And then instead of an ankle grinder in the attachment, we can put a welding pistol instead. So in this experiment, we simply took some, uh, some standard stainless steel pipe, and then we started cutting it into uh, pieces, roughly the length of, a, uh, of an exit class uh, propellant tank got a hold of some stainless steel end bottoms and then we started welding because there's been a discussion back and forth, okay, stainless steel is, is fairly cheap, it has some very interesting material properties in that it can be deformation hardened to a, a pretty high uh, yield strength. That basically means that you strain the pipe to the point where it actually starts expanding a bit like a balloon, but in the process of expanding it becomes progressively stronger and stronger. And we were wondering a bit, okay, how far can we push this limit? And in the end, could those results actually prove to us that we could, that there was some feasibility to building um, propellant tanks from a material which is actually considered quite heavy for uh, propellant tank use? Uh, exploit the deformation hardening uh, properties and then actually get something that came out as a nice uh, weight and mass compromise for propellant tanks. So that is what we've been doing so far and just within the last couple of weeks we actually manufactured a couple of uh, prototype tanks or just really test tanks. So the basic idea was well done. This is a two millimeter uh, pipe we have here, stainless steel standard pipe. We welded on a couple of uh, two millimeter end bottoms and then um, we simply started pressurizing them uh, these uh, these last weekends just to see I mean when what when would they rupture and how would they rupture so at least for the two tanks that were initially produced the goal was actually to do and perform a destructive test that's the only way to see how they burst and where they burst and uh, it's been a, a depressing matter for the so-called uh, Department of Destructive Behavior. So uh, we tried a couple of weekends ago with a, with a hand pump and, and tried to burst these ones. And we came out at a maximum pressure of roughly 64 bars, if I remember correctly, before the hand pump gave out. So we needed some heavier equipment. And uh, one of our specialists brought a uh, pneumatically 
uh, amplified water pump, which was capable of, of roughly 450 bars of water pressure. So that should do it. And we exercised that one just uh, yesterday, actually, and we got some pretty interesting results. First of all, we can definitely see that the deformation hardening is, uh, is actually going on. So for this particular tank, for, uh, from a pressure, a water pre it's completely filled with water so that we don't get an explosion. But filling it with water and then pressurizing from ambient pressure, the pressure climbs rapidly up to about 50 bars. Then the uh, material reaches its yield strength and then it starts expanding. Now, it takes up quite a lot of more water before it eventually becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. In this particular case, we started out with a pipe that was 273 millimeters in diameter. And the last measurement we got before it ruptured was 299.1 millimeter, if I believe, if I remember correctly. So this thing uh, grew in diameter by more than 25 millimeters. And then it ruptured. And frankly, it ruptured at a point where we didn't expect it to rupture because there are two stress points in a tank like this. First of all, there is one along the length axis where it's going to try and open up like this. The other part is the uh, round welding done here at the end bottom where it's going to try and, and, and punch the cap off. Now, from a physics point of view, uh, the round welding, as we call it down here, that one is, uh, is subjected to half the strain of the long stem of the pipe. So we would definitely expect this uh, section to split down the length of the pipe if, uh, if our welding was just reasonable down here at the end bottoms, at the end caps. So what we learned from this is, first of all, it did rupture at the end cap. It was quite an interesting experience. Um, but it also teaches us that our, um, our welding skills are not fully fine-tuned yet. We need a better welding factor here on the end caps, but uh, we, that's a process adjustment. That's, this is something we can do. And then we're going to repeat the experiments uh, over and see, well, next time it has to be along the length uh, axis that it's going to rupture. But this was a, a very interesting uh, experiment we carried out this weekend. And this uh, unseeming piece of two millimeter stainless steel pipe uh, held up to 75 bars before, 75 bars and a little, before it finally uh, gave in. So a little quick calculation, uh, one of our specialists is said that, that, that this little end cap, which took quite a beating, was subjected to something like 42 tons uh, trying to, to simply liberate this end cap from the rest of the pipe. So what did happen was that one of the, the uh, a crack developed in this welding, and at some point it started migrating in both directions, and it did so extremely fast. Uh, it deformed the entire end cap here. I mean, it went, first of all, X-shaped, and then um, the, uh, the access port we have here on the top, that one was simply bent out of shape. So what we gather happened was that, first of all, uh, the crack started over here and then propagated that way and that way, which means that this cap would be trying to do like this very fast. Now, we had some equipment up here, uh, a T piece, a pressure gauge, uh, and a, a couple of other pieces of stainless steel. And that one didn't really notice that the end cap started moving. So our best estimate is that this were part up here was simply standing still, and then the end cap just moved underneath it and simply bent this one. Um, we could argue that this had happened when this thing came crashing down again and hit the ground, but the pressure gauge, which is very, very delicate on this uh, Christmas tree assembly, it didn't have a scratch, so it never impacted the ground. So from this, we gather that the acceleration of this end cap was uh, quite impressive, and that simply just bent uh, the top port of, of this, uh, this piece here.
So we also know that this one has uh, changed shape significantly. Uh, this is way more spherical or uh, half spherical in shape than it should be and that's simply because it's been stressed so much that it was uh, it was more and more starting to act like a uh, like a sphere so perhaps an idea would be to use uh, end caps of a slightly thicker material next time to try and, and make sure at least this part uh, deforms slightly less so we only had 50% success rate in the Department of uh, Destruction so far because there is another tank lying right here behind the first one. And that one uh, was actually the first tank we did. It had some, uh, we had some trouble with adjusting the welding scheme. So it has developed a few cracks under, under, under testing. Uh, it, I think we had it up uh, around 60 bars before the, the leakage was so high that we couldn't fill water in as quickly as it came out. So we're going to try and patch that one up and then we're going to try and subject it to exactly the same behavior as this one and see when that one gives up. So all that uh, experience, I mean, we're quite encouraged so far, but we're going to try and, and use this to make a further chapter in this little uh, test scheme make another set of tanks and see how high can we really get on pressure before they, uh, they rupture. But the initial results are fairly encouraging. Uh, we didn't believe that, uh, that stainless steel might be applicable to, uh, to propellant tank use, but uh, very encouraging so far. And we're gonna, we're gonna see where this investigation leads, but who knows, we might be flying stainless steel tanks next time.